The Ninth Circuit this week ruled that there is no rational basis, no rational basis for anyone to believe that marriage should just between, be between a man and a woman. No rational. There is no rational basis. Do you understand what that means? That means you are completely irrational. That's what it means. You are irrational if you think that marriage should only be between... You have no reason, this is what they said, the only reason you could possibly have to believe marriage should be only between men and women is that because you are a bigot and you are a hater. That's what they said. Read the case. And by the way, they're not the first ones to have said it. And I'm sorry to inform you that people will continue to say it. You are a bigot if you want to deny basic civil rights to people simply because of a single thing, like their sexuality or their race. And I'm waiting for you to tell me what your rational argument against gay marriage is. It should be good. So, again, where is the tolerance? Right? Where's the tolerance that says that if you have a different point of view, you can be rational. No. See, they can't allow you. Because if you're rational, then they have to deal with you. All right. So, so what you're asking for is tolerance of your intolerance. You, you don't want to let people have the same rights as you, but you want them to be tolerant of you, um, supposedly because you have some kind of logical argument against gay marriage which I'm sure will include something like uh, um, it's always been a man and a woman, which is just a historical argument. I'm sure you'll say something like, oh, it's ma uh, marriage is meant to bring children into the world, which I, so I guess you're also against uh, sterile couples getting married because they can't bring children into the world, right? The, I'm, I'm waiting for your awesome, rational argument that no one can deny. Let's hear it. So they discard you. They just say, well, it's beyond the realm of reason. You're obviously just haters, and we're not even going to talk to you. This is the way the left operates. They won't sit and reason. They can't listen to all of the reasons that marriage has been between a man and a woman for centuries and why it has an, an intrinsic good to society. They dismiss those arguments as purely puff to hide your bigotry. That's what they believe. They won't reason. You see, the left is really about the death of reason. They always say that it's about reason, but it's not. It's about the death of reason. Oh, oh I see. If you give a shitty argument and someone says that that's a shitty argument, then they are just denying reason. They are unreasonable. They are illogical. You, therefore, are logical. You gave a shitty argument that to you, because you're fucking retarded, makes good sense. But since it doesn't fool anyone else, they must be the left. They're, they're just out to destroy reason. The death of reason coming from liberals. They just can't reason. They can't sit and think about things. Uh, you know what? It, it would be so much better if they were just reading from the Bible, and that's where they got all their morals from, right? I mean, Rick Santorum loves the Bible. Rick Santorum loves Jesus and the God of the Bible. You want to hear more? This is not a political war at all. This is not a cultural war at all. This is a spiritual war. And the father of lies has his sights on what you would think the father of lies, Satan, would have his sights on. A good, decent, powerful, influential country. The United States of America. If you were Satan, who would you attack in this day and age? There is no one else to go after other than the United States. And that's been the case for now almost 200 years. Once Americans' preeminence was, was sown by our great founding fathers. He didn't have much success in the early days. Our foundation was very strong, in fact, is very strong. But over time, that great acidic quality of time corrodes away even the strongest foundations. And Satan has done so by attacking the great institutions of America. You know, we, we had it so good early on, and then Satan came around and he did those terrible things like getting rid of slavery and allowing women to vote. 
that terrible Satan that, you know, his influence has come and taken over America. Now we're all fucked. Are you fucking good? Like, seriously, this is a Republican presidential candidate. Using those great vices of pride, vanity, and sensuality as the root to attack all of these strong plants that have so deeply rooted in American tradition. He was successful, he attacks all of us, and he attacks all of our institutions. The place where he was, in my mind, the most successful and first, first successful was in academia. He understood pride of smart people. He attacked them at their weakest, that they were, in fact, smarter than everybody else and could come up with something new and different, pursue new truths, deny the existence of truth, play with it, because were smart. And so academia, a long time ago, fell. Okay, I just want to make this point. It's one thing to say that you are smart and you know better than dumb people, right? And, and to be maybe, you know, you have that own self-righteousness about yourself. It is totally something else <clears throat> to say smart people are being misguided by Satan and that the thing keeping you safe from Satan, I guess, is that you're so fucking stupid. I mean, that's the argument that Rick Santorum just gave. He's like, you know, Satan is, it finds his way into smart people very easily. And since you're so religious, that means you're not smart. Satan isn't worried about you. You're too fucking stupid to fight against him, right? Jesus. I mean, he just made that argument. And I'm sure there are lots of people out there that would just applaud because they're too fucking stupid to know what he's saying. You'd say, well, what could be the impact of academia falling? Well, I would make the argument that the other structures that I'm going to talk about here had the root of their destruction because of academia. Because what academia does is educate the elites in our society, educates the leaders of our society, particularly at the college level. The leaders of our society, you know, mean like the uh, Republican presidential candidate, like you, Rick Santorum? Are you saying you didn't go to college or, and that you're proud of it, I guess? I mean, because by avoiding college, you've avoided Satan. I, the shit you say makes no sense. Uh, let's continue with the uh, gay marriage stuff. That's fun. Some people say it's a contradiction because you are uh, for a small government, right, for smaller government, but yet you want to change the Constitution when it comes to same-sex marriage. And that some people see that as government intervening on people's rights. It's affirming what uh, the laws of the states uh, have been for over 200 years. It's simply, you know, uh, putting in law what, uh, what has been in place in society for thousands of years, that this is what marriage is. There's an intrinsic value that uh, having men and women come together in marriage and having children and raising those children in a stable family, that's good for society. That's something society wants to encourage. And there are some who I understand have a different view of that, don't think that it's important, think that, uh, you know, that society will be just fine if, if that institution is no longer held to be uh, different or, or privileged and, and rewarded. I just disagree with that, and you know I think the uh, the appropriate thing is to get in the public square. Let's debate it, let's argue it, and and let's point point out the uh, the pluses and minuses. And I'm doing that. You're not really doing that. So far, the only argument I've heard is that it's been a man and a woman for a long time, and that uh, man and woman can have children. Now, men and women have children that they don't want all the time. They put children up for adoption all the time. And to say that those kids shouldn't be adopted into a loving family simply because that family is not a married man and woman is detrimental to the children. You, you don't seem to really care about that. You, you care more about your morality and your, your, your so-called, you know, non-bigotry, your rationality. <laughs> Uh, than you do about the children going to a good home or, or whether it's a loving home. You don't care about any of that. To you, all that matters is that if it's two dads, like, where, where is he going to put his penis? In the other guy's mouth? Ew. Or in his butt? Oh, my God. Like, that freaks you out so much. You don't care about the welfare of the fucking child. How often do you think these gay people are fucking? Seriously, it can't even be like a half a percent of the time that they are in existence. They, they must be doing other things and they're trying to be productive to society, unlike you, who's trying to put a constitutional amendment in saying that no state can allow gay marriage because that's how fucking bad you want to get your nose into other people's business. 
And when people call you out on it, you're like, well, well, they, they just obviously disagree. Yeah, we disagree. We think you're a fucking douchebag. I was recently on Joy Behar, and she said that she called you, I think it was bigoted, I'm paraphrasing, bigoted or homophobic or what have you. I have what a difference you? of agreement on a public policy issue. That doesn't mean I'm, um, I'm you know, I hate anybody. I don't hate anybody. I, my, my, I'm called by my faith and I'm uh, to, to love everybody. I do. I mean, I, I, I pray for people whether they're for me or against me because that's what I'm supposed to do. And just because I disagree with a, uh, you know, what a definition, uh, you know, a legal definition of what marriage is, doesn't mean I dislike anybody or hate anybody or, or in spiteful of anybody. It's because I think that's what's best for society. And we should be able to disagree without calling people bigots. Uh, I think that's really sad that 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 you have people on the other side because you you stand up for something that has been an institution in this in this world for 2000 years that all of a sudden now you're a you're a hater you're a mean person i'm not uh, I've, I've never been if you're not a hateful person then give me one good like one good example of how allowing gay people to get married directly affects you in a negative way how how is that going is 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 your house going to collapse? Is your marriage going to fall apart? Are your children going to get sick and die because some gay people can get married? It's already happened. We've already had states where that allow gay marriage and gay people are getting married. And guess what? It's not having any effect on the straight marriage going on there, you fucking idiot. So you've got no excuse except your hatred, your bigotry. You, you fucking, you, you're such a bigot. The only thing that's missing is the like, well, I have friends that are gay. Do you, and, uh, do you have any gay friends? Yeah, in fact, I've had, I've had gay people work for me. Yeah, and friends. Yes. You know, people say I have black friends. I, I well, <laughs> I, I mean, yes, I have, in fact, I was with a gay friend of mine just two days ago. I mean, so yeah, I do. I, and they, they respect that I have differences of opinion on that. I talk about these things in front of them and, and we have conversations about it. They differ from me, but they know that I love them because they're my friend just, and, and they know that I respect uh, and we have respectful differences. But, respectful differences you know what's a respectful difference gay people are not trying to stop straight marriage huh let's think about that one straight people are trying to stop gay marriage but gay people are not trying to stop straight marriage yeah that is that is a big difference isn't it i don't i, I don't think it has anything to do with respect either coming from the assholes like you See, I'm straight and I defend gay rights because I fucking think human beings should all have the same fucking rights. I don't think because you're a white, Christian, straight male, you should get special fucking privileges over someone who is a, a, a black, gay, female, or, or some shit. You, you know what I'm saying? Or atheist. It, they should be uh, all on the equal playing field, and, and you should not have any right to tell them what to do, just like they don't have the right to tell you what to do, you fucking moron. You know that's a headline, Rick Santorum has gay friends. It shouldn't be. It's, it was well known that Rick Santorum had, had, a, had a leading uh, a gay Republican working for him for 10 years. I don't know what I don't know what the what the uh, you know what the what the shock value is here. I mean, the fact of the matter is, when for example, when there was a um, man who was a uh, working as the executive director of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, uh, who was outed by one of the gay papers, the first person who came to his aid was me because he was doing a great job. Santorum, you idiot! The <clears throat> the discussion is not about whether gay people do a good job or whether there have been gay politicians or whether you have gay friends. The argument or er, the discussion is about whether gay people should have the same rights as straight people as far as getting married. And you talk about how, oh, they're the same and I treat them the same. And, you know, every, I'm not a bigot at all. And, and I defend them and whatnot. Just not when it comes to simple, stupid ass thing like marriage. Like the state recognizing a marriage between two people of the same sex. You, that to you is just mind blowing and you can't allow it. There's no good reason. You just have to defend it because it's what you were taught by your religion. Some assholes that were bigoted interpreted the Bible a certain way uh, to promote their bigotry and have an excuse like God condones it, and you bought right into it, and now you are forced to defend the stupidity that, I mean, you, you, you've got to know that you sound like an idiot, or maybe you're so stupid that you don't. 
in any case, I'm sure that you're not totally bigoted towards gays. I mean, they might not be able to get married, but all these people you've worked with and you think they can serve in politics, surely you, you think that they should be able to serve in the military uh, openly as gay, right? You, you're not all for reversing don't ask, don't tell, right? I want to discuss the last uh, Fox debate in which a gay soldier uh, got up at the debate on video and asked whether or not as president you would reinstate don't ask, don't tell. Here's what you said to him. Any type of sexual activity has absolutely no place in the military, and the fact that they're making a point to include it as a provision within the military that we are going to recognize a group of people uh, and give them a special privilege uh, to, uh, to, to uh, in don't, and removing don't ask, don't tell, I think tries to inject social policy into the military. I can only guarantee you about 100% that Rick Santorum fully supports military chaplains and the role of Christianity in the military, which is, uh, yeah, you guessed it, injecting social policy into our military, supported by Rick Sam fucking Torum, as long as you're not a queer. Uh, Senator, uh, you say sexual activity has no place in the military. Heterosexuals have been openly uh, heterosexual for centuries in the military without any problems, and you talk about about gays not being given, uh, or that they shouldn't be given special privilege, all that Don't Ask, Don't Tell and the re repeal of it does is say that they are given the same rights as everybody else has had for forever. Well, the, the problem is, is that sexual, uh, sexual activity with people who are, you are in close quarters with uh, and who are, happen to be the same sex is different than, uh, than having a discussion and, and being open about your sexual activity where there is, uh, you're not in that same situation. So you're talking about injecting, as so, I said wait before. Wait a minute, are you, say, are so, you saying you think that, that, that uh, homosexual gay soldiers are going to sit there and, and go after their male counterparts in the barracks? I didn't suggest that. It, it, well, you I'm said they're in close about, activity, in close proximity. We're talking, well, they're in close. They're in close quarters. They live with people. They they they, ha they obviously shower with people. The whole kinds of uh, the all the things that that are involved in living in a barracks or living out in the field. Those are those are issues that again some people. You're, you're not talking about that individual person, but you're talking about the ability for people to be able to have that unit cohesion, to be able to work together in an efficient fighting way, and obviously and also by the way the effect on retention and recruitment of people to to live in that environment. And yes, there. Are people who would feel uncomfortable in that environment, I, I wanna, and I as wanna, a result, it could hurt. It could hurt our ability to retain and recruit and to put the best fighting force in place. Senator, as I you said I, before, I, Chris, you that say, has no. Senator, if I may, if I may follow up, because we really are running yeah. out of time, and it's, it's okay. continuing on this conversation. You say, don't inject social policy into right. the military. Their their job is to fight right. and defend, and they're not a social experiment. I want to put up a quote for you. The Army is not a sociological laboratory. Experimenting with Army policy, especially in a time of war, would pose a danger to efficiency, discipline, and morale, and would result in ultimate defeat. Does that sound about right, sir? Uh, roughly, yes. That's a quote from Colonel Eugene Householder, who was in the Army uh, Adjutant General's office in 1941, arguing against racial integration of the military. Yeah, I, I figured I've heard I've heard similar quotes. Uh, it's very, very, very different. I mean, we're talking about uh, people who are, uh, you know, simply different because of the color of their skin, not because of their of activities that would cause problems for people living in those quote, close quarters. Senator, it's a very a different Colonel thing. Householder, and I read his versus, I, versus Senator, an I, act. I, Senator, I, I read Colonel Householder's comments yesterday. Everything that you said, living in close proximity, sharing uh, bunks and showers, uh, being in close proximity, what? There is, he used exactly the same arguments you used to argue against racial integration of the military in the 1940s. I feel the need to commend Mr. Wallace here for actually putting forth a decent argument on Fox News. And I need to also call out Rick Santorum because, of course, he's going to use the argument that being black and being gay is totally different because you don't choose to be black and, and you can choose not to be gay and all this kind of bullshit. We, we all know these arguments. It's just the same shit over and over and over. And Rick Santorum will tell you it's not a, a civil rights issue when it comes to gay people, only when it comes to black people, even though he uses the same exact arguments against them.
Yeah, I, I understand that. And I, I know the whole gay community is trying, is trying to make this the new Civil Rights Act. It's not. It's not the same. You are, you are black by, by the color of your skin. You are not, uh, you know, uh, homosexual necessarily by, by uh, obviously, by the color of your skin or no, anything else. No, but you else. are by... It's by, by a variety of... To, I mean, it, 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 is a fact of your bio of it. it is a fact of your biology. Obviously, it's one thing if somebody, you know, is coming on to somebody in a room, but the sheer fact that somebody is a homosexual, are you saying? I mean, these are all volunteers. They're all defending to, sir, to uh, protect right. our country, sir. That's exactly the point, Chris. They are all volunteers, and they don't have to join in a place where they don't feel comfortable serving with, pe with, with, with people because of that issue, and that's the problem, Chris. And, and look, you, the idea that somehow or another that this is the equivalent that, uh, you know, being black and, and being gay is, is the same is simply not true. There are all sorts of studies out there that suggest just the contrary, and there are people who were gay and, and lived a gay lifestyle and aren't anymore. I don't know if that's the similar situation. I don't think that's the case with anybody that's black. Did I call that shit or what? And I promise you, I didn't even look at the end of the video before I made my response. I, this is usually how I do my videos. I put the video up, and then as I watch it, I make my responses. You guys can tell this is not scripted. Uh, let's let's give one more clip to Rick Santorum that I'll respond to, and then we'll call this fucker done. This is the intolerance of the left, the intolerance of this secular ideology. It is it is a it is it is a religion unto itself. It is just not a biblical based religion, and it is it is the most intolerant. Just like we saw from the from the days of of the of the atheists in in the Soviet Union, it is completely intolerant of dissent because dis they fear dissent. Why? Because the dissent comes from folks who use reason, common sense, and divine revelation, and they want no part of any of those things. And and there we have it again. The your intolerant of my intolerance argument. Uh, why can't you just let me hate black people? Why can't you just let me have slaves? Why can't you let me dictate how you live your life according to my hatred, uh, my intolerance? You, you know, well, he, he's sitting there talking about the intolerance of like Soviet Russia, the atheists and all this shit. What about the intolerance of the Inquisition, you asshole? Uh, are you serious? You, you've not thought at, at all about the intolerance of your religion or any other religion, because I guarantee you, he looks at other religions and claims that when they, things like uh, wearing a burqa for Islam, that is intolerant. You know, but, but he, is he tolerant of it? Of course not. He just wants you to be tolerant of his religion. He doesn't care whether he's intolerant of your atheism or your other religion or whatever, or he's intolerant of you being gay and wanting to be married or you being gay and wanting to serve in the military. He doesn't care about that. You have to accept that he is unaccepting. You understand? It's, it's the most retarded fucking thing I've ever heard. Fuck you, Rick Santorum. Good fucking luck. I hope you're the fucking Republican presidential candidate because you won't fucking win. And even though I won't be voting for Obama or anybody fucking else this time around, I know that you'll fucking lose. And it'll be fun to fucking watch. Cocktopus out.